Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's video I wanted to show you how to bring a landscape from GeoGen into Unreal Engine and then add an auto material to it to make it so that it functions with your scenes very well. So let's not waste any time and let's begin. Just make sure to follow me on um, on YouTube if you'd like to know when this auto material will become available for Patreon and the Unreal Engine Marketplace because right now I am developing it. But for this tutorial, all you really need to do is have access to GeoGen and Unreal Engine and then you're good to go. We will start our journey in GeoGen because that's where we need to get our landscape from. And GeoGen comes with a lot of uh, presets. So if you click on the preset button in here, you'll have quite a few different uh, types of projects to choose from. Now, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at this Volcano 01 over here, which I think is going to definitely suit what I'm trying to go for because it has a very high sort of peak, as you can see, and it's got this lava dripping. And this is gonna be important because I'm going to show you how to also export the fluvial part of it all. So when we look at it here into the graph node, this is what controls the entire sort of system for GeoGen. Now, this is not a tutorial for how to set up and make a material, you know, a landscape. This is about how to export it and bring it into Unreal Engine. So what we want to do in order to get our height map from here, we are going to look at the further, you know, the further, the, the last sort of node structure in here, which is about this, you know, around this point. Okay, so when we look at it right now, we're trying to find what's actually generating the final output. So it's not going to be something that's called, called colorize or, you know, uh, sediment or whatever. But if we control double click it, this will show us exactly what this node is generating to that point. So, for example, here and here and so on. But what we want to get is we want to get the output, the height output. So you can see in here it has an height output that we can um, t take a node out. So I'm just going to go over here and click on export and I'm going to click on export height map. And this is going to ensure that we get this particular sort of height map from here. Now, over here, we have the options of uh, how we can export it. The first thing we want to do is let's say we want to export in uh, maybe like an 8K texture or a 4K. Well, first of, first of all, you'd be thinking that if you change these values, for example, here from 1024 to 4096, this is going to give you that sort of output. And, you know, you'd be right to assume that. But because GeoGen is still sort of like in development, that's not exactly going to be the case. But you know what? Let's just try it out. So we have it set to 4096 by 4096. So over in here, we're going to say, right, we want to snap to Unreal Engine, to, uh, Unreal Terrain. And then we're going to not have any reduction mode. So we're going to keep it as full. And then we have to select where we want the output to go. So I'm just going to click on this folder here and I'm going to put it into this folder and then just say select. And for name, I'm just going to leave it as that. So we will just export the name. Now, very important is for you to choose what type of format. Now, for Unreal Engine, you want to do R you know, dot R16, which means this is going to be quite a big map for you to export, but that's what you want to do. Now, when you click, uh, you know, click on the export button, you will notice that an export has been generated and it's roughly about 7.9 kilobytes. Now, that's very low considering that this is a 4K map. So let's just have a look and see what happens if we export it differently. So if we go up over here and, you know, we don't, you know, we can change it to 1024, it doesn't really matter. You'll notice there's nothing really changed in the viewport. That means that this particular setup is not doing anything. This is where you want to edit your particular settings in order to get a very good height map out of this. So for us, we're going to put that to um, 0 0.25. Once it's finished processing, we can now export. You can already see that it's got better definition. I'm going to click the export button again. And what you'll notice is that the map now is a 31 um, kilobytes map, sorry, 31,000, which is 31 megabytes, meaning this is a 4K map now. OK, so this is basically very important for you to do it this way. Otherwise, you will not get a proper map. Now, you can increase this further to um, 0 0.125, which means it's going to be an 8K map. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as Unreal Engine will definitely struggle with an 8K map if you're going to use Nanite Tessellation, for example. Now, once we've got the export, we can now go over into our Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to open that and then control space over here. Um, and you'll notice that we can actually, um, you know, we're, we're in a level. I created this level called Volcano Landscape underscore 4K. So I'm going to just um, click over. Well, I'm just going to add my Atmosphere's blueprint. But for you, you can just add the directional lights. Uh, simple as but I'm just doing this because it's just going to be a one-off solution 
Uh, but if you quickly want to add the lighting setup, set up, just go to Window, Environment, Light Mixer, and just click all the buttons that will show up in here for lights and everything else to have that quickly added in. Now, I'm going to switch over to the landscape mode. And in here, I am going to click on the import from file. I'm going to click these three dots over here, and I'm going to select the map that we exported out of Embergen. And then once we double click it, it will now load up the defaults, the settings of the map, which is uh, 4,000, you know, 33 by 4,033. So that's fine. And what you'll notice is that the height is not that great, but we'll leave it as that for now. Now it's going to say, let's add a material. I'm going to like say, let's not add a material for now so we can load up the map quite quickly. And I'm going to click the import button without changing anything else in here. Now, once I do that, the map will load, and this might take a bit of time depending on your hardware or depending on how big the uh, information is. But once that's done, you will notice that the uh, you know, Unreal Engine will now display the map, and there it is. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to select my Atmos Forge and make sure that I have my fog density set to zero so we can actually see this map. Now, when we look at it, you will notice that it's not very, it's not as tall as what we exported out of Embergen. And that's because we need to play around with the scale. So over in here, make sure that the lock, uh, this lock um, uh, icon is off. And then when you go to the Z axis, maybe push this over to something like 500. It really depends because, um, you know, 500 might not even be enough. But in this particular case, it seems that it kind of does the trick. So yeah, I would say about 500 is the right scale for what we had in Embergen. And you'll notice now that we have this massive slope in here and so on. And with the material that I have, the landscape material that I have available, I will be able to drop that in. And then I'm also going to be able to have a lava layer that's going to go down because that's how that auto material is set up. That was kind of how you um, add the landscape. But I want to show you how to add the how to export a texture as well or a map out of um, uh, Embergen. So I'm going to export the uh, river texture effectively, the one that I need to, in order to use it as a sort of like a lava um, um, flow. Um, so we have this and I'm going to drop my auto material on this. So I'm just going to go into my folder. Now, any auto material that you might have will work. So if you have any, just uh, make sure that you use it. So I'm going to drop this 8K version auto material on here. And once I do that, so if I go down here and drop it, this will probably take a bit of time for it to load. And I will most likely need to add the material layer as well for it to function. Otherwise, the auto material won't be able to generate properly. Uh, but I'm just going to skip the wait while this loads up onto the landscape and show you exactly how it looks after it's been applied. Okay, now excuse the massive amount of brightness because right now I need to set up the uh, layer. So I'm going to go into landscape mode over here and then I'm going to go to my paint and over in here where I have my um, auto material, which is this one, I just need to select... Uh, this I'm going to select this layer info here, which should be able to fix this. Now, obviously, this is not a tutorial about auto material. So if you don't know how to use an auto material, then I would I will leave a link in the description below for a tutorial that may show you how to set up one. Uh, but once the landscape layer loads, the uh, actual material that we've added should properly display on the landscape. So it's no longer this shiny ball of light. Uh, so let's just wait for that to... Um, set up okay now the auto material is added and as you can see it's already loaded up a sort of like a, a fluid map in here where i've got lava going on but this is not the one that's or appropriate for this landscape so we will need to go back into geogen and for some reason this makes my screen go blank uh, i don't know why anyway so once we're back in geogen in here uh, we want to then get the fluid data because if you remember, if we, um, you know, like look at the final output, which is this, you'll notice that we have this all of this lava coming down. So what we're going to find now is where what is generating this. So we're going to look at, um, you know, what, what part of this blend is actually generating this particular map. And you can see over here when we have the blend mask, we can already see one right about here. Or if we go here to the fluvial erosion, this is probably what's generating it, right? So we want to get a mask of that, right? Of that particular sort of um, um, fluid that's going down. So I think this might be the right one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, you know, left click and drag a, a, a node here. And I'm going to click ex export and then click export mask. And over here is going to ask us what type of sort of format we want. So for me, I'm going to 
uh, leave it as, uh, you know, snap to Unreal Terrain again. I'm going to make sure that this is an sRGB texture. Just make sure you actually take that on. Otherwise, it won't work. Well, at least it won't work in my case. In your case, you might need to untick the sRGB texture. Um, after that, I'm going to make sure that I put it in the same folder that I did before. And I'm going to export it as a PNG this time around. And I'm going to just call this Lava Flow like that. And then I'm going to click, well, I'm going to leave it at 8 bits. And then I'm going to click Export Now. And that should be done. And if we go into the folder, um, let me just have a look. Here is the folder. If I double click this, this is the map, which is quite good. This is exactly what we needed. You can see in here, it's quite nice. This is what we're going to be going to use for the fluid. So let me just put GeoJet down. Now back into Unreal Engine. Uh, in order for us to bring that map over, it's going to be quite um, simple. I mean, we can just click on import, import into the game folder. So I have it over here. This is the one. I'm going to double click it. This is the lava flow. Now I'm going to drag this into my material instance and that should override this particular flow that we have here with the new map. Um, and, and that in theory should work. So uh, let me just double click the material instance. Uh, this is the material instance for my new upcoming Volcano um, project. So the auto material that's going to be available on the marketplace. Um, and I have it in here where I need to drag it. Now, it won't allow me to drag it because that's a virtual texture. So I do need to convert this to a virtual texture. And once that's done, I should be able to drag it, although it's still not allowing me. So let me just check what's going on. Seems that I had a, ba a, ba a bug with it not converting into a virtual texture, but now it's fine. So when we go down here where I have my landscape river map, I am now going to drop this new texture and that's loaded up. But you can see it's not actually in the right place and that's because I need to actually tell it that this is a 40 33 sort of landscape and now we can notice over here that we do have a few a few problems so let me just check what those are I think it's more of an issue with the actual uh, setup so let me just play around a little bit with the actual strength of this and that should be fine something like that um, now I need to play around with the actual scale of it because right now it's just way too, um, the tiling is just way too big. So I need to play around and get the right effect. Let me just do that very quickly. And there we have it. Uh, we have the uh, lava river map sort of like, you know, coursing down like that. And if we get close to it, you can actually see it sort of like boiling down here as well. And this is like, this is done based on the fluvial map that we exported out of Embergen. And we could have had a higher texture, higher quality texture if we wanted to, but we just got this. And, you know, if I play around with these settings, I can actually get some various different kind of effects here uh, based on this. And obviously this is an auto material that's driving most of this stuff, but uh, you can see just how powerful it is to have a fluvial map if you have an auto material set up to use it. I'm just going to like um, tone this down, maybe, you know, make the scene a bit darker just so you can uh, get a sense of how, just how nice this kind of, looks like and i'm just gonna like increase the yeah there we go so that's a nice kind of flow now one thing that we can also do is actually add niag well add um, um, nanite tessellation so i'm going to enable nanite and let that um, sort of process so i can show you just how qu cool that looks like as well so i'm just gonna go over here into my uh, landscape and then enable nanite and then i have to actually build data after i do that now you can see it with tessellation active and this is looking really really good as i'm moving around with the 3d character here with a third person character you can see how the lava just combines with this as well so the lava is generated from the river map and it's now combining with the landscape very very nicely to generate these really really cool effects so be on the lookout for when i release this uh, particular auto material to the to, to well first of all to patreon and then i'll move on to the unreal engine marketplace but I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching me get this set up and how easy it was to just get a landscape from GeoGen and just put it into Unreal Engine.